Greetings, Body of Messiah. Mark Pulley here with Yahweh Yeshua Assembly in Fort Myers, Florida, bringing you another teaching of Yahweh's laws and commandments. We are going to talk today about the new moon. Most of us in Christianity, or that have come out of Christianity, never were talk, taught about the biblical new moon. How Yahweh and Israel used the new moon for Yahweh's appointed times. It was also, they used the new moon to start. When you saw the new moon, you knew a new, a new month started. You know, January, February, March, April, all those pagan names were not involved in Yahweh's biblical calendar. And we can see in Genesis, let's start off there, in the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14, And Elohim said, Let light be in the expanse of the heavens to divide to divide between the day and the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days, and for years. So Yahweh established the new moon as a Moedim. Now let me give you some definitions here. Um, you can turn to Isaiah 66, the new moons are 29 and a half months or 29 and a half days every month. So every 29 and a half days, you're going to find a new moon. All right. And what a new moon is, is just a sliver of the moon that when you look up into the sky, Israel knew that a new month had started. Many feast days were started on the new moon. When they saw the new moon, they began to blow the shofar to announce that a new moon has started. And see, most of us, we were never taught any of these things. And when you come to Torah, you learn these things, you think it's new age, you think it's the occult, or you think you know, they were goofy. Now, you know, horoscopes are, are wrong the way they use them today. That's all witchcraft. But um, when you look at the new moon, you don't get power from the new moon. You don't pray to the new moon. You know, none of that stuff. You just look to the new moon because the new moon says are the Moedim, Yahweh's appointed times when Yahweh would meet with his people. There is also a two-day um, thing where there is no moon. It's totally black. You can't see it. Which is where the Hebrew saying comes from, no man knows. All right? There are many biblical references to the new moon or the first day of the month. Also, the new moon dictates Yahweh's calendar. So we saw in Genesis 1.14, most versions say that it's uh, the, for the Moedim. Uh, let's look here. I got a couple of versions here. Let's just, I read you out of the Hebraic Roots version. So let's read out of Yahweh Restoration Ministries version. Verse 14 says, And Elohim said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and for years. And in their footnotes they write, where Yahweh appointed the moon for seasons or Moedim, the plural of Moed, 
and so on and so forth. So they are for Yahweh's appointed appointed times. All right, let's turn to the book of Colossians. And we're just going to see how much biblical evidence there is that we just didn't pay attention to when we read the scriptures when we were in Christianity because they, they don't teach this stuff. In Colossians 2, verse 16, it says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath day. So right here it says, because you are keeping Torah and because you celebrate from new moon to new moon and Sabbath to Sabbath, and because of you, you keep the new moon and the Sabbath day and the Sabbath year, every seven years, the Shemitah, don't let no man judge you. So right here, Paul is re-emphasizing the Torah. Paul is re-emphasizing that they, as Torah believers, as Messiah believers, still keep the new moon and the Sabbath. And he says, let no man judge you. No, let no man put you down because of this. Now, Paul is ministering to people that are just coming out of paganism. And so he's explaining that we still keep the new moons and the Sabbaths. Now let's turn to Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 22. Isaiah 66 verse 22. It says, for as the new moon, or for, excuse me, for as the heavens and the new earth which I make stand before me, declares Yahweh, so your seed and your name shall stand. And it will be from new moon to new moon and from Sabbath to Sabbath. All flesh shall come to worship before me, says Yahweh. So we see here that when the new heavens and the new earth take place, then we will see that we will still be keeping the new moons and the Sabbath day. And so that is very, very interesting. All right, let's go to a couple other scriptures. Let's look at Leviticus 23 and 24. Chapter 23 and verse 24. It says, Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first of the month, a set-apart day shall be to you a memorial acclamation of the resounding of trumpets, holy gathering. So it says here, we know the new moon is on the first day of the month. And it says here that they, they're going to sound the trumpets on the first of the month, which would be a new moon. And see, if you don't understand that, you wouldn't get that understanding. Now, here's something interesting. In Genesis 8, let's go there. Genesis chapter 8 and verse 5 and verse 13. Genesis chapter 8, verse 5 and verse 13 it says and the waters decrease continually until the 10th month 
in the tenth month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen. So when were the tops of the mountains seen after the flood? On a new moon. That's interesting, isn't it? Look in verse 13. It shall come to pass in the 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth, and Noah removed the covering. So it says here, first off, that when they began to see the mountaintops was on a new moon, and when the waters were dried off the earth were on a new moon. The, when the waters were dried off the earth were on pretty much the Feast of Trumpets the first month of the first day of the month. When um, they saw the tops of the mountains was on in the 10th month. So the last month. So it took about 30 days to experience the water drying up. And, but both occurrences took place on a new moon. So that's interesting. See, we wouldn't have understood that before. Now here is something also that is interesting. That on a new moon, the prophets received a word from Yahweh for Israel. And you can see this in, a, in Ezekiel 26, 1. Here we can, we can read this. Uh, Ezekiel 26, 1. And in Haggai 1, verse 1. Let me find it real quick. Ezekiel 26, 1 says, And it came to pass in the eleventh year, in the first day of the month, that the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, And if you go to Haggai, um, the book of Haggai, let's see if I can find it real quick. Haggai chapter 1 says, In the second year of Darius, the king in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of Yahweh by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel. So we see here that in the mouth of two witnesses, and you can research this and you'll find that there are many other things um, that on the new moon Yahweh spoke to the prophets. So does that mean he only speaks on the new moon? No, but it's interesting that if you have a prophetic anointing, if you are functioning in the office of a prophet, there is a good chance if you are listening and if you have gone through your Shemitah season and you are keeping the Sabbaths and you are obeying Torah, that Yahweh is going to begin to speak to you on the new moon. He's going to give you instruction, direction on the new moon. He's going to give you a word to speak unto the body in the new moon. All right. Let's look in Exodus chapter 40 and verse 17. See, the new moon is important. I won't say it is as important as the Sabbath, but it is very important. The feasts start on a new moon. It's, it's, it, it's all connected. When you see a new moon in the sky, that will determine when a certain feast 
start like the Feast of Trumpets. So when we have to, you know, stop looking to the Gregorian calendar and we have to start looking to Yahweh's calendar and just go outside and look at the moon. It's half full, about half month is over with. Totally full, you know, we got a whole month ahead of us. A quarter full, we got, you know, around seven, eight, nine days, you know, when it gets, you know, an eighth full, well, we know we're approaching the end of a month and the beginning of a new month. And when you see just that sliver in the sky, then you know a new month has started. And if you see where it's totally dark, then you know you're just a day or two away. All right. I mean, in Exodus chapter 40, verse 17, I hope I told you Exodus, it says a new moon, the first month in the second year on the first day of the month. All right. That's just a note I wrote. So let's just, let's just go, go there and just see exactly what the scripture is saying. Exodus 40 and 17. And he burnt sweet incense thereon. Well, I must have wrote down the wrong. As Yahweh commanded, I must have wrote, wonder if it's, um, well, well, I, I must have wrote down the, the wrong verse. Or am I, oh, that's 27. Let's look at the verse 17. Exodus 40 and 17. And it came to pass in the first month, in the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was reared up. So we see here that the tabernacle was reared up on a new moon. Interesting. On a new moon. The first day came to pass in the first month, in the second year, on the first day of the month. We know that that would be the Hebrew beginning of the new, the civil new year. Right now we know the, the new year is in the springtime, but the civil calendar starts on the Feast of Trumpets. So we see here that it's referring to and mentioning the new moon, but only if you understand that the first of the month, the first of the month and the first day of the month is a new year. All right. And then Numbers 1, 1, it says, Yahweh spoke unto Moses on the first day of the second month. He spoke unto Moses on the first day of the second month. Numbers 118, it says they assembled on a new moon. That's interesting. Now, 1 Chronicles chapter 23, verse 31. These are just scriptures that have to do with the new moon. It says to offer all burnt offerings unto Yahweh in the Sabbath, in the new moons, and on the set Feasts. So we see here that they offered burnt offerings unto Yahweh in the Sabbaths and in the new moons as well as the feasts. So we see here about the new moons. Second Chronicles 2 4 says that they gave offerings on the Sabbaths and on the new moons. It repeats that in Second Chronicles 8.13. And in Ezekiel 46, 3, it says, The people of the land shall worship at the door of his gate before Yahweh in the Sabbath and in the new moons. And we read at the beginning in Colossians that they said, Paul said, not to let anyone judge you concerning you keeping the Sabbath or concerning the new moons. 
So the new moon tells us when a feast day is taking place. And you know, when you go on Facebook, you see all kinds of people doing um, certain feasts at certain times and you wonder, what's the deal? Where do they get this? And how you can discern whether or not it's accurate or not, or when you're to keep a feast day, or when you are to keep other things in Yahweh's biblical calendar, you look to the sky. You look to see when the new moon starts. And when the new moon starts will give you answers on when to keep a feast or when a new moon is. It's the first of the month. So when a new month starts, you look to the sky, and when you see the sliver of the moon, you know that a new moon has started. Okay, and secondly, when you look to the sky and you see a new moon concerning certain months of the year, like the seventh month is for the Feast of Trumpets, you have a new moon for the spring feasts as well. And so, not all feasts, but some of them, as far as I understand, maybe I'm misquoting there, but nonetheless, it tells me that I need to look to the sky for the new moon to tell me when certain feasts are and when a new month is beginning and when a, new, when a, a month is ending. So that's just a little information for those that may be new to Torah or that are just coming out of Christianity and wanting to know when a feast day is, when um, a new month is starting and when a month is ending. It is not, you do not use the moon to determine the Shabbat. The Shabbat is every seventh day, Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. That's when the Sabbath is. The book of Genesis clearly shows that. And when you do the timeline of Yeshua's uh, crucifixion, the Passover started Tuesday night, Wednesday. And he was resurrected at the end of the Sabbath on the seventh day of the week. So that tells me that the Sabbath is gone by um, and how you know when the Sabbath is, it's the seventh day Sabbath. Genesis 1 says on the seventh day, Yahweh rested. He didn't say on the seventh day, that the moon um, told him when the Sabbath was. So anyways, that should give you some insight, some understanding of the new moon. We are to celebrate the new moon with the blowing of shofars. We are to celebrate the new moon with a um, celebration. Look to the new moon. Uh, they had a uh, Congregations came together on the new moon. Is that a commandment? Um, I don't see it as a commandment, but nonetheless, if you want to celebrate the new moon, have some people over or in your assembly gather together. But anyways, I pray this gave you some food for thought. Do your own research. Look up scriptures on the new moon. Look up teachings on the new moon by ministries that have greater knowledge and understanding of it than I did. I just shared with you the understanding I have. The Feast of Trumpets begins on a new moon, which will be in a couple days. When you see the new moon, that will tell you the Feast of Trumpets is here. Blow your shofar. If you don't have a shofar, uh, download a shofar sound to your phone, or, you know, just shout unto Yahweh with a voice of triumph.
Until next time, Yahweh bless you, Yahweh make his face shine upon you, and Yahweh give you great peace and shalom. Be safe, be healthy, be whole, be sound, be complete. Be encouraged to obey Yahweh's laws and commandments. Yah bless you.